What's up my fellow Yugi tubers Alex here, aka Inch95, bringing you guys a how to be a pro player video. This is number 15, 16, I want to say 16, and this is the third time I'm filming it. I filmed it once, deleted it on accident, the second time I got a phone call like towards the end of the video, and I don't know if you guys know, but on iPhones, if you get a phone call during a video or whatever, it doesn't save the video, which is kind of stupid, but at least it didn't save on mine, and it's happened before, so... This, um, I promised everyone, people voted that it should be this video. I'm remaking this again, and for those of you that don't know, the time is 2.35 in the frickin' morning. Uh, yeah, I couldn't sleep. I'm not, you know, I'm all iffy right now. And, uh, I've just been on, you know, the internet and stuff. Uh, watching a couple sports highlights and, uh, keeping up to date on my stuff and just Facebook and whatnot and, you know, chatting with friends. But anywho... I promised everyone this, this video is going to be on consistency, and since you guys have already seen um, my last GB build that I posted, I'm just going to use that for the sake of its example, because I don't, I pretty much, like, everything that I, that I would be using tier 1 is either borrowed and or not mine, so I pretty much gave everything that I borrowed back except this deck, which obviously is mine, I always keep my stuff, but... It's just going to be it's going to be an example so don't base it just off of this deck. I'm just going to use it as a general example on what I like to do with my decks. Um like for instance if you don't know like here here's here's like it's basically just going to be an idea video like as well as far as like trying to make your deck as consistent as possible. So the first tip that I can easily give you is obviously play testing consistently. That's the most obvious thing. And a lot of people say, "Well, what if I don't have someone to play test, you know, like a friend or whatever?" Well, you can literally just sit down, do your little shuffle thing, and then draw your five cards. And then you do your shit. You draw your five cards, right? And then your sixth card. Um, and the best thing with this is you can look at all the plays you could potentially do. Um, and obviously, you know, you could pretend like you're playing against a certain deck. Like, what would you do in a certain matchup? Um, but the best thing... But something better than this that I would do is... Because I know people would be like, oh, you know, in this hand, I don't know, maybe you... Set Bestiari, set Wabaku. For instance, you know, for I'm just giving like an example. And let's say they don't do anything. You pass. You're gonna draw. Um, you draw a Phoenix Chain or whatever. Like it just keeps going, and you just like you see what kind of plays you do in different scenarios. But it's it's not that simple because you every, this game's so unpredictable and luck based that that doesn't always work anymore with every deck. And then people are like, oh, I can I can just win this game. Oh, look, I drew a broken hand. Well, it's not always guaranteed because with decks like Rabbit, you have kind of awkward hands. You know, like you draw your Vanillas and it's still consistent though that's you know the deck wins now the the main focus of this video that i wanted to make that i wanted to give on actually making sure that your deck is consistent if you're not consistently able to i know i'm using that word consistently for a different reason right now if you're not consistently able to test with like friends or at locals um or if you're planning on going to a big event and maybe you just switch decks and wanted to make sure if your ratios are good and everything so what i personally like to do is actually shuffle, you know, obviously you do your little shuffles and everything. And in, in this game, it's gotten to the point where I want to address the fact that it really, like, decks should be built in my personal opinion. I do this personally for my play style, and I think other people should do this. Build a deck not just to suit your own style, but suit it to where you can you can do well going first or going second. Personally, I always end up going second, like, <laughs> I don't really have good luck with dice, so, I mean, it, I can live through it, like, I've learned to play out of my situations and everything, but, you know, for others, that may be a little bit tougher, or it's kind of awkward, like, for me lately, it's actually been tougher to play turn one out, because I'm, I've just been so used to playing turn two out, um, or, or going second, not turn two, but, you know, actually going second, because there's more reactive things that you could do, you react based, on, ba you base your plays off, off what your opponent is using, on their play that they're doing, um, excuse me, so the best thing that I could say for making sure your deck is the best possible turn one and turn two deck is actually, like I said, you'll shuffle your deck, and this is all you need to do, you do like your standard drawing cards, but what you do is, let's say you're running, I don't know, I think this is like a 42 card deck, draw, draw a bunch of six cards, like this, so... So let's say we just did three of them. You check how playable, and this is my my previous version. I ha I didn't update it just because I didn't really want to show all the new text and stuff. Um, I have two of this deck built. 
So you pretty much just look at how playable each hand is, and you do this, let's say, we'll do this with which, with with all the hands in the decks. If it's 42, then it should come out to like 7 even. So uh, you do this basically with each hand that you have in a deck, and when you do that, that basically allows you to see, and you do this multiple times, you see which scenarios aren't as playable. If let's say, let's say all these hands, you can do something in each of these hands, both turn one and turn two. Like, let's say, let's look at this hand. You have Dark Hole, Warning, Proving Ground, Bestiary, Book, Reborn. That is an amazing hand. You could do so many plays with that, both turn one and turn two. Turn one, it's kind of iffy. Um, if you're going turn two, you can react, you know, you can do all your explosive plays. You can actually just set BCR, you set Warning or whatever. If you're going first, you can do that same play. Um, like like this hand too, you can, you know, so, oops, sorry. You can summon a GB or or you could just set Torrential if you don't want them to know what you're playing turn one. Um, you can maybe bluff a Chariot. You can summon a GB, set the Chariot, set the Torrential if you if you don't care about getting too greedy. Um, like all these hands, like pretty much, except this one's kind of iffy. This is the only one. Like you can kind of stall out with the Wabaku and uh, and Deep Prison. You have back row removal. Um, actually, this is kind of an iffy hand just because two MSTs in the Dark Hole, but you can prevent them from OTKing you, so... Or, or prevent them from doing all their explosive plays. This one, this is a pretty good hand, really reactive. Um, you got your Starlight Roads. This one, you know, like, like, I don't want to keep going, but you guys get the gist of it. You want to make sure that you can... You have a deck that you can... Pretty much every six cards that you're going to draw, clump together, is going to give you the best possible odds of not having a dead hand. And hopefully this is making sense to you guys. Um, and I really like all my other videos of Pro Player um, that I've done that have been tips and everything. Um, they've all been fairly long, so to speak. So I want to keep this one a little bit shorter, hopefully below 15 minutes. Um, and that's the main thing that I wanted to give you. I mean, obviously you're going to want to test your deck. And it obviously depends on the level of players you play. Don't go to your locals or you know your regionals or whatever. And obviously you're not just going to play one type of player. You're going to play different play styles. But as far as skill level, you're going to probably want to play every type of player. Now, personally for me, I've been having issues lately, especially over the past year. Um, I've been competitive, but I haven't really, really been bothering playing like at locals and everything. Just because of car issues, you know, school and everything. And I've just been focused on life. And if I play, I really only tested with a lot of friends that, you know, are some of the top players in this game that I personally know, or players that I know that are really amazing players. They have great reads. They have, um, you know, they have a great mentality. They they know all their plays. They know they know all their reads. They know they're just amazing, top notch players of the highest caliber. And it makes it tougher on me personally. Like the past couple weeks, I've been starting to go back to locals more consistently in my area, and it makes it harder on me. Um, even, like regardless of a deck being consistent or not, like I, I played Rabbit a couple days ago. I borrowed all my friend's stuff for Rabbit, and it was tough on me because I was so used to testing and playing Rabbit against good players who consistently make the right plays um, almost 90, 90 plus percent of the time that it was throwing me off because other players were making wrong reads, making really we awkward plays, and not awkward as in unorthodox good plays, but bad plays as in extremely bad plays. Like, you know, they were just doing, like, bad reads. They were like, oh, you know, every time I looked at the graveyard, they were like, oh, you have a reborn. And it was just, I was just checking the grave to see what traps they had or, you know, just shit like that. Like, that those are the tips that I want to give you. Like, try to play different skill level uh, levels of, eh. Try to, try to play players with different skill levels, basically, because, and do the same strategy. Like I said, if you want to play, uh, it's called Devil's Advocate with um, a friend, and it's basically, like, obviously you can you can play certain scenarios out. Like, what would you do in this scenario? What would you do in this scenario? But what I like to do is I would, I'd sit down with a friend and we'll see what kind of hands we draw. And we'll just fan out every six cards um, that we do. And we'll do what I showed you earlier. You'll do, like, you do every six hands. And, and you'll just keep doing that and see what you would do in each situation if you went first, if you went second, what they would do. And it kind of helps you both at the same time. Um, and you can do that with, with all your friends. And it allows you to not only become familiar with the deck you're running, but it allows you to see how consistently, basically, you're going to open up playable. And I know in the past, you know, there's always outlier factors. You know, luck is a huge factor in this game. But the thing that I want to address is if you can minimize the level of, or the amount of cards that are less playable in, in situations at different times. Like, for instance, this card. This is just a random card that I picked. Starlight Road. This is not 
the highest playable card. But in the sense that we have, you know, Double Torrential, you have Mirror Force, so if some players are using it. You have, you know, Dark Hole, you have uh, some of the stuff that dragons use. I think it's called, like, Exabeetle or whatever, Hieratics. I know they can do that. Or, no, that thing sends, so it doesn't destroy it. Never mind, so not Exabeetle. But there's just a lot of cards that can just blow stuff up. Um, and, I don't know, this is a reactive card, and it in, it's bad typically in twos. For me, it works. I, I just did this deck in, according to my play style. Again, this is the old version. But this card is not as playable in a lot of scenarios. It's typically a dead card, and it just lets a player overextend as long as their opponent doesn't have like a warning or solemn judgment or something of that sort. So, you know, you know, if you can minimize the amount of cards like this, like it's okay if you have one or two cards like that. Like for the most part, in a lot of scenarios, the cards in, for instance, this deck, they're all I can do something with them. You know, the staples are those types of cards that, uh, you know, like MST, you can't do that. You can't use it against monsters. You can't do it, you know, to prevent battles. But it's a staple. Like, aside from the staples, the cards that you use in your deck, like skeleton-wise, that aren't staples. You know, like, for instance, if this is Glad's, you know, your GVs, your, uh, you know, all the other stuff, like your D-Prisons that you add in there. Maybe you're, maybe I'm teching Smashing Grounds or something in there. They're, they're more playable than the cards that, like, Starlight Road. They're more playable than those cards. And if you, like I said, if you can minimize the amount of those cards, then you're going to draw fairly consistent. Again, luck is a factor. But like I said, if you use that tip, like, uh, let's see, this hand. This is an amazing hand. Like, I would rock this hand. Like, let's see, like, if I was going second, I would not mind. Like, it doesn't really matter what deck you're going against because I have you know, a plethora of plays I can do. I can set my Reaper, I can sit on it, I can, you know, set my my, my uh, Fiendish in my Starlight Road. There's no way they're probably going to OTK me. Like, there's there's probably, no, like, I don't think there's any way anyone to be, able, like, any deck right now would have all the outs to this right now. And then my sixth card would be Deep Prison. Like, that's ridiculous. Like, I can summon this. I don't care about most of the shit that they do. I have my Heavy for backer removal. And, and if you're going second, that Heavy helps you. If you're going first, you have the easy sit-on play. So, see, like, it just... Doing that, and if you're by yourself, if you're not even with friends, you can just do that. That's that's really one of the best tips that I can give you as far as making sure your deck is really consistent. So consistently shuffle your decks. Use different shuffles because some players shuffle, um, don't even shuffle your deck. Like you'll shuffle your deck and sometimes they'll tap or they'll just cut or whatever. So do as many different shuffles as you can. Test out all your hands. Like this hand, it's, it's iffy. Oops, my bad. So this would be the next card. So look, and this one I would draw four GBs. That would be... You know, typical inch 95 luck. But, you know, you can still play out of it. Set the beastie. I don't know. Set, not the lance, but like set the MST or whatever. And then just wait. Maybe they'll attack it and then they'll set one back row. And then you'll MST. You'll summon like a quest. Lance over the monster or Laquari run it over. And then, you know, you can just do all your plays. Like this hand. Valor, Gores, uh, Warning. You know, you can do all your plays. You can sit defensively. You can go aggressively. Like, it's ridiculous. Like, that's why I love doing strategies like this. And people always question like how, like regardless of how bad I drew. I went to Locals yesterday, and I drew... I don't run Secutor in this deck. Magically, it appeared every now and again. But I typically drew these cards, even after I shuffled them back into my deck, going Esadari or whatever, or any of that stuff. People know that I always have... It's it's the curse of the Inch 95 GBs. I always have these cards in my hand, and people can vouch for me there. There was not a single game, and I am not over-exaggerating, there was not a single game that I did not have at least both of these cards in my hand at one time. And... Uh, it was just ridiculous, and I was still able to play out of those situations because the rest of my deck allowed me to have those lesser playable cards with lower utility that were weak on their own be better. You know, like, you know, Wabakus, for instance, supported me in a lot of issues where I had those low weenie GBs, or, you know, the Starlight Road supported me when I had, like, Retiari and, like, they couldn't do anything with, like, five other dead back rows, and then they would, like, heavy me or Torrential when I summoned the monsters, and it would just give me pluses eventually, so... That's what I really wanted to address. I'm sorry this video really ended up being damn near 15 minutes. But hopefully you got an idea from this. It's basically just shuffling your deck and doing hands of six. But do it a multitude of times. That's basically what you have to do. And do this with friends. Do it against different decks and see what kind of plays you guys would do against each other. So basically you can even play open-handed if you want. Um, and I've done that in the past. And you see the best possible plays and both players gain easy knowledge to... To both players' decks, again, or it's not individual specific decks, but like those archetypes, those, those, those meta picks, you know, those, those tier, those certain tier decks. So that's what I want to say. 
If you enjoyed this video, please thumbs it up. I'm sorry it was a little bit late, and uh, it's 2.49, 2.50 a.m. right now. So I don't know if I'm going to post this now. I might post it a little bit tomorrow morning, like around 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, give or take, assuming I wake up that early, because I have no plans for tomorrow. I'm on summer vacation. Thumbs up if you guys are on summer, or thumbs up if it's coming up for you guys, if you guys are looking forward to it, your plans. If you guys are in the Northern California area, comment below. Maybe you can hang out in some of the locals. I'm starting to travel more. You got a lot of my car stuff worked out. I'm free most of the weeks. And uh, also, I might be posting a quick video on this, maybe like a two or three minute video, hopefully in the next couple days. Um, from what I heard, there might be here in Northern California um, a summer league, so to speak, of kind of like a 10 week playoff thing. Um, it's like a group effort from what I heard. It's going to be three, ma three core players with like two backups or whatever, and then the, the entrance fee is like $150, but I know that sounds like a lot, but I'll give you guys more details. The prizes are to be determined, but it's probably going to be a, a huge ton of cash, so that's what I'm assuming at least. But for $150 entrance fee, it has to be huge. Like, it can't just be nothing. So uh, hopefully, they, you know, they decide on that, and I'll keep you guys posted on that, um, so maybe you can hook up or whatever, meet. And uh, yeah, I know a lot of my fan, uh, quote-unquote viewers, not fans, I don't like the word fans, have come up to me and said what's up and they really enjoyed it so you know if we can if we can kick it and enjoy ourselves at locals you know may as well <coughs> Woo, sorry about that <coughs> whoa god yeah sneezing there um but excuse me about that but anyway so please thumbs up this video sorry it was long if you enjoyed it tell me if the tip worked for you i guarantee this tip will make you guys' decks much much more consistent as far as the way you build your decks, you'll see what cards are more dead. So basically, like I said, draw your hands of six and make sure that each hand is playable both turn one and turn two. That's all you need to do. If you see a couple hands in your deck, if you see really inconsistent hands, like 50% of the hands are, you know, playable in one turn and the other half, and, uh, and, and like they're not playable at another turn, but the other half of the hands are completely playable in both, then... That's great. Or, or some hands might not even be playable in either. Maybe you just run that many dead cards. So just do that. It'll I guarantee like that will Im immensely increase your play. I know I've done it since God knows how long. So please, thumbs up this video if you liked it. Favorite the video. Comment below on what you think. And let me know what you guys want on the next pro player video. And we'll take I'll take it into deep consideration. Lately I've been making a lot of these tip videos. And uh, I really hope that they're helping you guys out. I, pro I, I really, I'm really stressing... Just make sure that you take this tip. I highly recommend it. There's, I don't know what else to say about this tip. I really think that it will increase both your skill level as far as players and deck building and innovating as far as your choices because I know there's a lot of innovators out there that struggle with keeping their decks consistent and fast with the meta. So, you know, whatever the format may be, keep it sexy and keep it inch 95-y. I don't know if that makes sense. But um, peace, YouTube. Thumbs up. Later.